This is part four of I Was a Nomad Before It Was Cool. Last we left off, I was in Thailand. I had just finished taking a TEFL course and I ended up staying uh, because there were opportunities for jobs. So first, a TEFL course is the acronym Teachers of English to students of foreign languages, well that's TESOL or TEFL, teacher, teaching English as a foreign language. But, and I stumble on that because there are a lot of different acronyms for that, but essentially a TEFL course or a TESOL course is designed to teach native English speakers how to teach English to non-native English speakers, normally in their home country, so abroad. And there's ESL, which is English as a second language, that's taught in a native English speaking country. So in the case of ESL, you have foreigners who are living in a native English speaking country and they want to improve their English. But a TEFL course is really where the teacher is training to teach students who all have the same uh, mother tongue in their home country. So that way, as a native English speaker, you can travel the world and teach English. So. I took this course in Thailand, south of Bangkok on a beach, uh, well, it's a little beach town called Bam Pe. And what had happened was I was really living in Japan. I took the course and I loved Japan. I mean, sorry, I loved Thailand. And there were lots of job opportunities. I was offered a job. So I decided to stay in Thailand. And what I did, I took my return trip back to Japan to collect my things. And I returned to Thailand almost immediately. Well, I guess within a month, you know, I had to travel around and see things. It's one of those things. Anyhow, um, I started teaching English there and I was very, I was very happy that it is odd though. It was, it, Thailand is an odd place, especially if you're a woman and you don't know this, but there are a lot of middle-aged men, but now that I'm middle-aged, I'm going to rephrase it. There are a lot of old men. So when I think old, I say over 60, over 70. And they often come from Western countries or Anglophone countries, but not necessarily. Uh, but they come from the United States, the UK, a lot of French men, um, Germans, a lot of Germans. And they come to Thailand to meet Thai women. And we don't need to get into the, you know, all of the details, but what happens when, if you don't know this, when you show up in Thailand, you will see a lot of older white men. I like white men. Don't worry. I'm not, I'm not stigmatizing anyone, but very old. And they're with little teeny tiny Thai, hopefully women. So Thai women do, not all, I'm not jumping into the stereotypes too deeply, but Thai women do often look younger than what their biological age is. So it looks like you see very old men walking around with little girls. Often, usually they are over 18, but maybe they're not. Um, I'm certainly not the police to check. It's very noticing. It does not go unnoticed. Um, and it is an odd phenomenon. And even when I was taking the TEFL course, I noticed there were a lot of men in that category who didn't really have the profile. They, they had other careers um, and they decided to take a TEFL course to teach English where whatever the career was that they had in their home country, they could make a lot more money. So I didn't get that. But then slowly I started to get it. it. It's very easy to find Thai girlfriends, get married. There is a sex trade also that is tolerated there. I do not know what it's like now. I, I suspect nothing's changed. But all that's to say, you notice this right away and you have that juxtaposed with you know my enjoyment of Thailand, just the, net, the natural beauty, the food, the culture. You have two different sides. So sometimes it was difficult for me as a highly liberated woman to handle both ideas. Anyway, um, I did enjoy Thailand and 
I taught for a while. I taught English for a while. And I was offered from the company that provided the TEFL course that I took and successfully finished, uh, one of the trainers actually offered me a position as an assistant teacher trainer. So what that means is when you know when you take the TEFL course, you have a head trainer, and that's someone who has taught for a long, taught English for a long time. They've gotten a higher certification, and they're teaching native English speakers how to teach English. I was asked to be an assistant trainer, and I was just that only an assistant. I, I'm certainly not saying, oh yes, I was so wonderful they made me. Hit. No, 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 no. It was really assistant, um, and I think it's from all my years, and I have a feeling it's from all my years in professional practice as an architect that may have led to that because a lot of the things that an assistant did weren't, they had, they didn't have a lot to do with the teaching of or training of new teachers. It's more the business side and keeping the clients happy who are also the trainees. That was more my job. So I think that's probably why um, I was asked to do that. Uh, but I thought it was great. It meant a pay raise. Uh, and also they provide a place to live uh, rent free. So yeah, I was pretty happy for quite some time doing that. The other thing that happened, which is, it's not unusual, but it's not normal for all countries. Really in Thailand, it's, a, it's very involved to get a visa to stay, you know, for a year or two years of work a work visa, those things, they don't really do it like that. What you do is, um, I believe, I forget how long, I think you do have like three months uh, on a tourist visa if you're, if you're an American or a Canadian, something like that. And then what you do is right before that, that visa, that time is going to expire, you cross the border and come back and then you have uh, another three months. This does, do not try this in other, you know, so in Europe, you, you can't do that. Most countries, you can't do this, but in Southeast Asia, it's a thing you can do that. Um, so most people in my case would either you go to Cambodia, you can go to Malaysia, you can go to Laos or Lao as it's called. And it, it doesn't take that long. You just go across the border, come back. And like that, you have three more months. And that's mostly what us foreigners did. And that's what I did. And as a result, I got to see uh, quite a number of neighboring countries in Southeast Asia. Uh, so things were working until one day, my boss came to me and he said he wanted to start up a TEFL school. And he, he had a number of locations. This My boss wanted to take over the world. He wanted to have new locations in South Korea, a new location in France, a new location in Egypt, quite a number of random locations. And he was sending out assistant trainers paired with, that would have been me, paired with a experienced trainer to set up the course in other locations. And he did ask me to go. Uh, and I was slated to go to South Korea at first. And I didn't want to go. I really didn't want to go. And I had a feeling that I wouldn't go. But my boss did make it clear that I wouldn't be allowed to stay in the position where I was. The, the whole idea of me being an assistant trainer was, it was covert. It was really to prepare me to set up a course elsewhere. So if I did ultimately say no, then that would also mean saying no to this perfect job that I had. And I just have to go back to teaching English elsewhere. Anyway, uh, I'll stop the story here. And to find out what happens next, you'll have to stay tuned.